Hello, uh, welcome to the lecture on plotting. Um, this is a really fun lecture because it's one of the ones we're going to be concentrating on looking at data and really visualizing our data. Visualizing our data is uh, both very simple and also really important because it's a really nice way to gain some intuition about a new data set. Um, usually this is one of the very first things we do when we get a brand new data set and we don't know what we're looking at, we start plotting it in various ways. And um, being able to plot it in the right way and exploring the data and try to compare the various aspects of it is usually one of the first steps to inform what kind of analyses we actually want to do. So let me give you an example of what plotting is. Um, so plotting is, is pretty straightforward, uh, at least in the simplest case it is. So let's say that we have two measurements of some kind uh, and we're going to plot one of them on the horizontal axis and the other one on the vertical axis. I'm going to call them X and Y. Here, okay. So we have a couple of data points, and uh, we're going to plot them just like map coordinates. So let's say we have one point, which is at the coordinate one one. We can write that as the coordinate pair one one. Let's say we have another point at two three. So that's two on the horizontal axis, three on the vertical axis. So this is two three. And let's throw in one more point. Let's say we have the point uh, four two. Right. So four on the horizontal axis and 2 on the vertical axis. So this is 4, 2. Right? So these are the three data points we have, and we like to visualize them in this way. Um, so what we're going to do is organize this information in terms of vectors of x-coordinates and y-coordinates. And they're going to be matching each other in pairs. So they must be the same size. So let me show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is turn this into a list of coordinates in x and y. So I'm going to read them off just like on top there. We're going to do 1, 1. That's the first point. And then this point is 2, 3. So 2, 3. This point is 4, 2. So x is 4, y equals 2. So these notice that they are in pairs, and they must be the same length, OK? Because you can't just have an empty x with no y hanging out. That doesn't really work in terms of plotting. Um, so let me show you how this actually works uh, in terms of some code. Um, what we're going to do is. Uh, start out um, with our MATLAB terminal here. And I'm just going to input the x vector and the y vector as vectors of numbers. Okay, So I'm going to type in exactly what we have. So x equals the numbers 1, 2, and 4. And then correspondingly, y equals the numbers 1, 3, and 2. So this gives us our x vector of horizontal coordinates and the y vector of vertical coordinates. Then in order to plot it, all we have to do is make ourselves a new figure and call it the plot function. And the plot function, in its simplest case, takes two arguments, a list of horizontal coordinates and the list of vertical coordinates. So we can say x comma y. That is all we really need to be able to plot these two, these two uh, lists of numbers. Uh, for a variety of reasons we'll go into later, what I'm going to do is actually specify the, um, the, the limits of the x-axis and the limits of the y-axis so that we can see more clearly what is going on. So let's type this in and run this piece of code. And here's our plot. Okay, so let's just look at it and uh, see what's going on and see if so we expect it because we're expecting something like this, right? So what we have here is all the x coordinates on the horizontal axis, all the y coordinates on the vertical axis. And the three points we're plotting are 1, 1, which is right here, 2, 3, which is right there, and 4, 2, which is right over there. So that's correct. And what we're discovering is that what MATLAB has done by default is connect all of these three points with lines. Okay, So that's what it does by default. Um, now we know that. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple more tricks. So what we would maybe like to do is uh, instead of plotting them with lines connecting them, maybe we just want a dot at each of these three data points. Okay, So in order to do that, uh, what we can do is add a couple of other optional parameters to the plot function. So at a minimum, plot takes x coordinates and y coordinates. right? But we can also give it another argument. This is now going to be a string that tells it what kind of markers we want. right? So if you don't specify anything, it gives you a line. Let's say I want uh, dots. Okay, so this period here tells me that I'm going to uh, I'm requesting a plot that has dots in it instead of lines, 
And let's run that and see what happens. Ah, here we go. The dots are rather small, but they are what we expected. There's a dot here at 1, 1, dot at 2, 3, and a dot at 4, 2. So that's good. Um, other things that we can change in terms of the plot is that we can also uh, specify the color of the line. So let's say that we want a, um, a red line, um, and we want it to be a, um, a dashed line. So we want a red dashed line. So this is sort of a shortcut for getting you to a red dashed line. If we run that, you'll see that this is exactly what we wanted. I have the points, I have the lines connecting our points, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 2. And they're connected with a dash line that happens to be red. OK? So that's great. Um, this is a very simple plot. And um, it's easy to do some more arith arithmetic on my plots and plot functions that are a little more complicated. OK? So let's say that instead of plotting, just plotting these th three points, what we're going to do is plot something that's slightly more complicated. So let's say I want to plot a quadratic function uh, between negative 10 and 10. OK? So here, what I'm going to produce is a list of integers that count from negative 10 to 10. But I kind of want the, the plots to, be, to contain points between the integers as well. So let's say that I'm going to count by point 1. OK? So this is going to produce for us a vector of points that's going to count for negative 10, negative 9.9, .9, negative 9.8, et cetera, et cetera, all the way until it hits 10. And for the horizontal, that's the horizontal axis. And for the, y, the vertical axis, what we're going to do is uh, take x squared. OK? And that will allow us to plot a quadratic function. OK? So if we run that. Uh, that gives us a part of a quadratic function. But you'll notice that uh, because I've specified the, 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 the limits of the x and y axes mm -hmm. to be between 0 and 5, I'm only seeing a part of the parabola that I'm expecting to see. So what I can do then is instead of specifying these, I'm just going to take that out and uh, run this by default. And you'll see that this produces the parabola that we expect. Okay. Um, you can all play all kinds of games um, of this kind. So for example, let's say I want to plot, instead of the quadratic function, I want to plot a, let's say, a sine function. Okay? So we can do y equals sine of x. right? And let's say that instead of a red dashed line, I want a, um, let's say I want a, um, a blue line that has uh, o's for every point. And also, I want lines connecting every point. So here, we can run this code. And we get the following plot. Right. So here is horizontal axis, which is just all the numbers between negative 10 and 10, counting by point 1. And on the vertical axis, we're plotting the sign of that number. And every data point we have is denoted by one of these little blue circles. And I'm also plotting the straight lines that connects each adjacent point. Okay. So that is plots.